Yes, uh, bang bang Ray Hall, please uh, press the, the like button and subscribe. It's about um, a mate of mine called Peter Kelly. Um, I, I met Peter Kelly in Albany, but take a little bit further back to uh, Wandsworth. I've, I've said it before, but it's part of the story. Yeah, Peter Kelly, um, Wandsworth, I mean, he's about 73, 74, he was there. Um, I was in I was in the scrubs um, as of what things happened to me. But anyway, it's about Peter. Um, Peter Kelly, big guy, tall guy, six foot one, six foot two, maybe a bit, bit bigger, mass, muscular, big built geek guy, can can have a white fight, dangerous guy, yeah. Um, was within them days uh, in the seventies, sixties, seventies, bad bad place, yeah. I mean, it's even bad now, but it was worse them in, in them days. Because uh, it was all like all the screws in there were like ex ex MPs, miniature police. Uh, yeah, people in like uh, Paddy Wine, Paddy Wine, a bad screw, mate. I mean, Pete, there were screws like him in there, but bigger than him. That was really really bad. He also caused plenty of problems and get these other big screws to uh, come in and, and cause plenty of damage. Yeah? But he used to bash people up all day long. He wasn't allowed across the centre. The centre was a uh, uh, just couldn't walk across it. It was. Um, if you walked across there, mate, you'd, you'd, get a, um, you'd get smashed to pieces. Only two people I know of have ever walked across the centre in Wandsworth. That's uh, Frankie Fraser and Roy Shaw. No one else. Uh, if they had walked across that centre, uh, they'd be bad. They left Frank and they left Roy Shaw. Didn't give them no grief at all. Uh, but it's a bad place, Wandsworth. And when I was, when I was there, um, the first time I was there, there was no cages at the end of the wings to stop people walking about. You couldn't walk about in Wandsworth anyway, it was a very secure place, very strict, um, very, very uh, hostile, uh, screws, dangerous screws in there, they used to bash people up all day long. Come on, we know that um, you, you can more likely handle them yourself, but when they come in three or four handed and they've got truncheons and all that, and uh, you're in trouble. There wasn't so much CS gas there and things like that because that was in the, other, in the old days. In the 60s, 70s, that area, that area, 60s, 70s, bad, bad place. But Peter Kelly, big guy, um, I believe he was on the freeze. Um, screws uh, didn't like him. He didn't like the bit, I mean, he didn't like being, no one likes being in prison, but he didn't like it at all. He didn't like being bossed about by people that are smaller than him, not i.e. smaller in size, but smaller in, in just the way they are, you know. And so Peter, um, he had, a, he, had a, he, had a, he had a row with one of the screws in there. Um, one of the screws took, took the liberties with, me, with him, um, wouldn't let him out um, to post a letter, and, and he, he come out and went crazy, yeah? And uh, in the morning, he come out and he threw piss over the screw, and uh, they banged him up a bit quick. But one morning, he kept doing it, yeah? He kept doing it, the screws couldn't really handle him as such, yeah? He was a big, big man, you know what I mean? But they had to because he was just taking the piss out of him, yeah. He came out one morning, done a screw with a piss pot, uh, aluminium, there's the aluminium piss pots, the very tiny piss pots with the lids on them. Uh, as I say, usually you, you fold up all your, all, all, your, uh, all your poo and all that and you chuck out the window. But Peter, this time, uh, must have been in the cell with someone, he just two or three hours and uh, just pooed in the, in the pot and weeded in the pot and waited for the door to open up in the morning and done the screw, what up? Done him with poo, uh, pee, everything. Mulled as a screw. It smashed him across here with the with, with the um, with the piss pot. Went a bit over the top, so he banged it. He got banged up. All of the nick went banged up. The whole nick banged up. This is what Peter Kelly is telling me. I don't. I wasn't there. This is what Peter Kelly is telling me when I met him in Albany. Yeah? Uh, Peter said that they uh, they come in team handed. Um, this went into Peter. Too many handy, really. They couldn't really get handle it. Um, when they go in there to handle, when they go in there too many, they can't, everyone's trying to grab a piece of him, but they couldn't, yeah? He was hanging on to the bunk beds and all that, so what they've done is got, got the people out of the, of the cell that was with him, got him out, slammed the door, and went back in there, team handed. When they, they grabbed, dragged him out, and they straddled, straddled him down the, down the stairs. In them days, um, they cast iron stairs, but, uh, and, and there used to be on uh, spindles, and there used to rattle, and there used to rattle, yeah? Unsafe, really, but there used to rattle. And uh, they straddled him across the, straddled him across the, the wells, and kept punching him uh, around his uh, genitals, 
and all that and bashing him right up yeah uh, he eventually got to the block the block in, in Wandsworth is uh, similar, to, uh, similar to Winchester Winchester and Wandsworth are the same sort of made prisons with a centre uh, when I was in Winchester well I didn't even know I was in Winchester I thought I was in Winchester the block stairs there go down really really steep and the Wandsworth is the same uh, the, 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 the stairs there in Wandsworth uh, uh, block just go straight down mate I threw him down the stairs, bam, 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 I threw him down the stairs, got to the bottom, smashed him out a bit, threw him in the cell. Uh, uh, he's going mad now. He's in a single cell. He's in the block. Uh, you got a piss pot in there, you got water in there, and that's about it, yeah? Um, anyway, comes out in the morning, uh, does the exact same thing, does a screw with a piss pot, and goes fucking mad. And so they steam into him. And back him up and put him back in the back in the cell. He's in the block now, so they can't do that in two and three. He's in the he's in the seg unit. They call it a seg unit, yeah. So it's you can find him. Anyway, they put him in the um, back in the cell. And uh, anyway, uh, two days later, uh, they haven't been letting him out. He's un undo the door, threw his food in there, shut the door. The piss pot can be full up. They don't care, boy. Right? Uh, this particular morning, he comes out. Uh, he does a screw again. This time it's too much. Uh, the number one governor. The number one chief, I'm not the governor, sorry, the number one chief, yeah, uh, not Sean Pitt. This, now, don't forget, this is what he's telling me, you know, I'm only telling you what he told me, yeah. The number one chief, the one with a big crown on the head, massive crown. Uh, people have been in in, uh, in prison in them days, it was understandable who the chief was, yeah. And don't forget, there was no railings around the neck, so they dragged him, they dragged him across the uh, the centre and everyone, like, like, just battled him. Anyway, uh, the chief goes in his cell, he said, Kelly, this is what Peter's telling me, Kelly, I want, to, I want to come in, I'm number one chief, I'll be silly now, let me come and have a quick chat, yeah? Peter's going mad because he's been bashed up, and he? Uh, come in, he went, look, Mr. Kelly, let me tell you something. We're going to transfer you in a week. A week today, you're being transferred, you couldn't even be transferred before that, yeah? But let me tell you something. I'm the chief of this prison. I'm the chief of Wandsworth Prison. I'm in charge of Wandsworth Prison. I'm not in charge of the outside of the prison, but in 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 in, in Wandsworth Prison, I am the number one. I will rule it. I will rule it in here. No one knows outside what I do in here, only me. Let me tell you something. If you keep putting anything over my offices, poo, we, anything, bash him up, anything. He said, all I've got to do is get a doctor along here to write a death, a death certificate out, Peter Kelly. It's that easy. We can kill you that easy. And no one will know no different because we'll get you buried, put away, no time. No one will be out doing nothing. You understand, Peter Kelly? Peter said to me, <laughs> Peter said to me, he went, he didn't say a word to the chief. He just sat down on this little on this little chair and just passed wind. He just passed wind. You couldn't believe it, yeah. He said, "Right." He said that was the most frightening feeling I ever, I had. He said he, he told me that within a week I'll be out the out of, out of this place to another nick, and a week's a long time. He said, you could go be, even go before, Kelly. A week's a long time, mate, he said. And the worst thing about it is, I didn't want to, thought, I didn't want to go to sleep. I was trying my hardest to stay awake. I didn't want to go to sleep because I had a feeling they was going to come in and kill me. He went, mate, he said, you don't know how much, how much fear that gave me, yeah? He said, that, but, he said, two mornings after that, they come and got me, steamed in, come and got me, dragged me out, took me to, to Albany. Right. I'm with him in Albany, yeah. Uh, Peter got to know me through A Wing, took me in the gym and all that. Peter was just powerful, man. Peter was powerful. He used to do collar to collar on the Olympic bar. Collar to collar. Not there, collar to collar. And he used to he used to uh, he used to bench press three plates, three plates each side, uh, for five to eight reps each side, what like collar to collar. And I've seen him do. I've seen him do four plates for three reps. Strong, strong, very, very strong. His legs weren't that powerful, but he had 
big, big shoulder, massive shoulders, massive back. And he's very good at deadlifting as well. Um, I got, as a mate of him, a bright power. Well, not that pal, I wasn't there, you know, not pally, pally, pally. But um, he used to look after me and such, make sure that I, I got fed. I got f he loved rice puddings, yeah? He had a thing about rice puddings. He always done the rice with carnation milk. He loved doing that, you know what I mean? He loved cooking. And uh, we used to get good meals of him. I love Peter, mate. He was my best pal in that. Yeah, you know, you couldn't get a better mate than that. And uh, I was on the, I was on the uh, I think it was the twos. And I was on the, on the, on the, uh, the long spur. I was on the long spur, and my cell opposite, I was opposite a guy called Lloyd Gibbons, yeah? From, I think he's from Brixton. Lloyd Gibbons, a car dealer. Big fuzzy air glasses. Big guy, powerful guy as well. We used to go to the gym, lift weights with us, you know? Most guys in Albany, uh, when I say most guys in Albany, the big, most, most, mostly big guys use the gym, yeah? The little guys, the big guys. Anyway, in the gym at that time was Sam McCarthy. Sam McCarthy, good fight, Sam McCarthy. He, uh, what is he? What is he? What is he? Sam McCarthy. Uh, uh, what is he? Cruiserweight? Not cruiserweight. Can't be cruiserweight. Featherweight. Light feather. I don't know what he was anyway. So, uh, people let me know, yeah. But Sam McCarthy died not so long ago. Nice, nice guy. Very polite. Talks. How oh, all right, mate? You come right and stop this geezer, mate. I'm telling you, you come right and stop this geezer. Can really march on. People watching my podcast would comment. It. Sam McCarthy could have a right thing. He was a right fight, mate. Can't he? Also, there was a guy called Paul Paul McDermott. Uh, I know Paul McDermott for Labber Grove. Paul McDermott was with him. I uh, got to know Paul McDermott. Um, Sam McCarthy uh, taught me a lot on the bag. But anyway, I was always on the weights upstairs on, in the um, on the top, yeah on the stage and I've got I loved it in there I loved Albany until I got myself in a bit of trouble but um, Peter Kelly straight such a nice geezer one day uh, one morning well, sorry one morning one late evening uh, we're not we're not banged up we're out of the cells I'm myself uh, writing a letter and uh, it was letter writing then no phones or nothing in there then mate you could be lucky to go down to the box, screw box, and maybe you, and maybe be able to use the phone. You know what I mean? But very rarely, you have to grovel like that. And so it was all letters, you know. And anyway, I was doing the letter. Also, I could hear shouting on and screaming, yeah. And it was Peter, Peter Kelly, having a, having a, having a row with um, Lowell Gibbons, and they're both big lots. Lowell Gibbons got glasses, and all of a sudden they're really rallying. You know what I mean? So I come out, got up, come out. I don't want to get too involved because. Low Gibbons is my opposite myself. He's a nice geezer, Low. He doesn't cause much problem, but he's uh, shouting on at Peter. I like Peter, and I like Low. So I don't get too involved in it, yeah? But all of a sudden, I could hear Peter saying, you're going to copy you are. You took, the right, you took the right piss, you know what I mean? Taking that and taking this up out of the oven. You shouldn't have done it, you know? It's not for you to take food out of the oven and put it on the side, put your food in. Who do you think you are, you know what I mean? It's about... Listen, prisons are always about all about food. Food is the governor in prison. Let me tell you something. Anybody can nick your food, mate, it's the worst thing you can, they can do, yeah? Anyway, he didn't nick it, what Lowell done. He'd gone down with his own food, seen Peter's in there, and he thinks he don't know who's Peter, Peter Kelly's. Lowell Gibbons, Lowell, Lowell Gibbons is a little bit of a bully, really. I don't know. He took the food out and put it on, on, on the table and put his food in, as if someone would never. Peter's come down and seen it. Someone told me it, it, it's Lord Gibbons. He's took it out, put his own in. Then he's gone upstairs. I'm can hear all this. I can hear all the shouting, screaming, murders, Yeah, mate. They them two there. Peter Kelly went crazy. Went absolutely mad. And he's Peter. When Peter Kelly goes mad, you got to be careful, mate. You know what I mean? He told he's told Lord Gibbons to get in the toilet. Lowell Gibbons is one of the people that he ain't gonna bow down, he ain't a coward. He takes his glasses off, come on in. Let me tell you something. Peter Kelly smashed him to pieces. Peter Kelly, the first thing Peter Kelly done was he bang, he nutted him, mate. He smashed his nose, he opened his nose like it was this over the up, mate. And then he smashed him to pieces. I had to pull Peter Kelly off, yeah, because I thought Peter Kelly would do some serious, serious damage to him, yeah. 
Lowgivens uh, went back to himself, didn't call the screws, didn't call the hospital, nothing. He's got just stung his nose and his eye. He, he, and the next day he came out, he was all really bruised up and smashed up. I thought that was it, you know, but Albany was running places uh, that it was it was a close knitted uh, wings, very close. You had a centre, in a, a centre, glass centre that goes up, you know, like that, and he had the spurs, one spur, two spur, you know, three spurs, yeah. I was the middle spur, you had two spur, uh, spur on the side. And as I say, it's close knit. Peter was upstairs, Lowell was opposite me. Mate, I see Lowell Gibbons on come out of his come out of his cell. He hit Peter Kelly with a frying pan. He hit Peter Kelly with a frying pan over the head. Peter Kelly fell down the stairs, mate. I'm gonna tell you something. Lowell Gibbons the worst thing he could ever have done. Cause hitting Peter Kelly on the head, it was like hitting a coconut, mate. He's as hard, he's ever as hard as they can. He might have split open a little bit, a bit odd. He got up, mate. I swear to God. He nearly killed Lol Gibbons. He nearly killed him. Lol Gibbons, right, had to go to the hospital. He had to. Peter Kelly, I'll tell you what, Peter Kelly broke, broke a plastic knife in his belly broke it, he went plunged it so hard, it went in his belly, he snapped it, yeah, but then it went into his belly. And Lowell Gibbons, mate, he must have realised he'd done the wrong thing there, and I think Peter Kelly, um, nothing ever happened after that. Uh, Peter Kelly came to my soul quite a lot, Lowell was next door, opposite me, there was a few people going to Lowell Gibbons' cell, but they all, no one wanted to know, no one wanted to get involved with Peter Kelly, no one wanted the aggro, and not only did not want the aggro, I was a young boy, big boy. Uh, I was with Peter at that time, you know what I mean? When I say with, with him at that time, I'd have been with him at that time if anything had happened, you know what I mean? There's no one would have, they would have stinged it and Peter would have allowed that, mate, no way. So anyway, um, Peter uh, taught, me, taught, taught me a lesson and I used to go downstairs with uh, Peter when we was going out on the yard, walking around the yard, yeah, out in the grass yard. And let's walk down there with Peter, mate. And you know, he had big feet, Peter, massive feet. And he was saying to me, he said, See you, boy. He said, You're the strongest, you're the strongest man that I know. He said, You're young. He said, You're the strongest guy I've known. He said, I've never seen anybody do what you do. I've never seen anybody do four plates, each side on an incline. Rep it. I used to rep four plate four plates, he's 180. And 180 kilos, I was just going somewhere, I used to rep. Decline, 220. Decline, no problems, and, and uh, I was so strong, powerful. Because I was in the kitchen, I was eating yeast. Yeast was something that someone told me to get. But Peter, I mean, what, Peter's was, Peter was one of them guys like well, I had to meet when I come out of prison, yeah. And when I come out of prison, I went over to Bermondsey. Uh, he lived in Jamaica Road, and he was married to a girl called Kathy. Forget her second name now, uh, but. Everybody at that time in the Jamaica Road, they all worked for the print, yeah? Most of them worked for the print. There was a lot of, all that South East London, Bermondsey, uh, Deptford, Catford, Woolwich, all them sort of places, right? There was all that seemed to be young robbers. I don't know what it was, it was everybody around that area, them areas was all young robbers, gold bullion and all them things, and security vans and all that. You had your Elves, Doggan, and Doggan, Deuce, Dennis, and Mehmet, all that little firm, was down Jamaica Road. Uh, you had, I mean, just a bit further, you had, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Billy, Billy, Billy Haywood, Harry Haywood, all that, all, all on that little plot, all proper workers. People were getting plenty of money. Like, loved it, mate, I loved it around there. I mean, I lived in Lewisham, but I was a, a lot around Bermondsey, uh, down Jamaica Road, and I was always around there. But Peter Kelly, mate, oh, I loved him to death. Uh, it's, you know, rest in peace, Peter Kelly. Oh, I mean, I liked him a lot, mate. It was a shame that he died. Um, his, 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 uh, common, his wife to be, I'm not quite sure he married her, she sometimes uh, phones me up, sends me messages, and, and his son. His son uh, does kickboxing. He's in the cage. He does, he's in the cage fighting. He's a good fighter, all, all accounts. And, um, but Peter, I loved it, mate. 
I love the geezer. He was a nice, nice geezer. And the, one of the f funniest things I ever seen him do, yeah. Battersea Power Station, right? They got into Battersea Power Station. They got into um, the director's penthouses upstairs before it was all pulled down. Long before that, mate, when it was there. And they got a painting out there that he put in his house. I went around his house in a block of flats he lived in Jamaica Road, opposite the Lil, the Lily Butt, with a Billy Head. And I went upstairs, mate, and I see this panel on the wall, and it had, had a little tear in it, yeah? They tore it, tore it, but a little tear. And it was a painting by a guy called Claude Money. <laughs> I swear on my life, mate. It was a painting by Claude Money, and it became so hot. And because it had a little cut in it, Peter thought it wasn't worth no money. So he thought, what they done? What they do? Fly in the Thames, and that's still in the Thames. <laughs> It'd be wrecked by now, you know. We don't know, do you? Do you know what I mean? But a claw money, how much that worth? That was worth millions and millions of pounds, you know, or hundreds, of, hundreds of millions. But uh, Peter, uh, he was a guy that always, always got money, always got money. Uh, me and Peter uh, done bits and pieces together. He's he's a fantastic worker. Um, you feel safe with him. He knows what he's talking about. He knows what he's doing. And he knows how to do it. And I loved him to death. And rest in peace, Peter. I'll say it again. But you know, I'm just sorry that me and him ne never really met that too much. Um, when he when because I've got IPP and you know, I got put away for that long time. And uh, he he carried on living. He, he met a beautiful woman and her, her kids and everything. And he, he became a dad and a good man mate but he's got another boy another boy I think he's called Peter um, I think he co he contacts me sometimes in my comments a big boy big guy I mean big 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 guy all Peter's wife's um, nephews and uncles and uncles aunties they're massive people big powerful people mate. I swear them printers are massive anyway this is Bang Bang Ray Hill uh, please press the like button and subscribe and let's hope England wins tonight what's your fancy Give me the score, yeah? Nice one. Take care. Have a good have a good evening, yeah? Bye.